Jesus, my brother and sister, green brother and sister, I pray all is well. Um, I pray that the grace of our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus had that script to your court to really, really his purpose. Um, most importantly, brother and sister, I pray that you know that our Lord is faithful. Okay? Brother and sister, I have a word for you today. But before we get into the word of the Lord today, let us pray so our heart to get into a place to receive all that the Lord has to pour into us today, okay? So without further ado, let's pray. Uh, dear Heavenly Wise Father, we repent of our sins. Please forgive us our sins. We're coming for your throne. We thank you for your grace, we thank you for your mercy, we thank you for your sacrifice. Lord, we thank you for loving us, we thank you for being here with us, Lord. We thank you for keeping our hearts, Lord. Continue to shape us, continue to mold us, continue to call us to live the way you want us to live by your glory. Lord, speak to us, speak freely, Lord. We need your word from heaven. We're desperate to hear all that you have to say to us, Lord, that we may mature in righteousness. Oh, Lord God, we thank you, we love you, speak freely, Lord. In Jesus' Christ's name we pray, amen, amen. Amen. Well, brothers and sisters, let's get into the word, okay? Brothers and sisters, um, as we look at a library, right? We go to a library, and when we go into a library, there's many books that we can check out and read, okay? And as we uh, check out these books, and as we read, we can see the story that the author have written. Oh. We can see the story that the author have written. Oh. Okay. And the author of creation, the after our life are uh, revealing his story in this seven year period leading up to the second coming of Christ Jesus. Okay? And God is revealing his story, the testimony of his son, that his son is the author of life. Oh. Okay. And as we would go to a library in this life and pick up a book and read the life or a biography of another, how much more should we pick up the word of God, the Bible, and read the life that God has given us through his testimony? Oh, man. Okay. And brothers and sisters, as we consider uh, a library in this life is filled with books that those filled with books that are, as we consider the libraries of this life are filled with books that we can read, how much more can we consider that there's a, there's a library in heaven, and, every, and in that library of heaven, there's books that record our life. Oh. As we consider the libraries of this life, how much more should we consider the library of heaven? And in the library of heaven, there's books of our life, and everything in those books are recording everything that we had did and walked in this life, even every idle word. Okay. And the Lord says, speak this to my children. The title of this message is... The author of life. Uh, the title of this message is The Author of Life. Okay? Whenever we check out a book or we read a news article, at the bottom of the article, there is a name written at the bottom of the article. Or when we buy a book or we read a book, there's a name written at the bottom of that book. And that name at the bottom of the book is the author that wrote it. Oh, uh, okay. Well, in the kingdom of God, there is an author, and that author is Christ Jesus, our Lord and the Savior. And that author is recording everything that we do. Everything that we say, everything that is moving and shifting in this life, the author of heaven is writing it every day of our life. Okay? Every day of our life, he have dispatched this angel that are out here right now that we cannot see. And they're beside us every day of our life recording our life. And the truth of the matter is, everything you do is being recorded whether you, whether you believe or not. <laughs> everything you do is being recorded whether you believe or not. But the question is, if we're not in Christ, we'll be judged based upon what we did instead of what he did on the cross. Uh, and if we're judged by what we did, we'll be condemned because every man has sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But if we step before God in Christ, then there's no judgment for us because we only live by what he has written through his testimony. Oh, man. And the Lord said, I am the author of life. Okay. Brothers and sisters, as we consider that Jesus is the author of life, we must consider the righteousness of his will. Oh. As we consider that Jesus is the author of life, we must indeed consider the righteousness of his will. Because see, the author of a book tells the story. Oh. The author of the book wrote the story. So in order for us to understand our Lord, we must consider his righteousness because the righteousness reveals the author heart. Oh. The righteousness of God reveals the author of heart. And that righteousness is Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Okay. And then as I spend the time with the Lord, the Lord took me to Exodus. The Lord took me to uh the Lord took me to Exodus. 
chapter 12, watch this. He took me to act, uh, uh, act, uh, excuse me. He took me to Exodus chapter 12, verse 26. Watch this. So let's go to Exodus chapter 12. Give me one second, brother. Okay. Go to Exodus chapter 12. Okay. And this is where to read. It said, And when your children say, say to you, What do you mean by this service? You shall say, It is a sacrifice of the Lord Passover. For he passed over the houses of the people of Israel in Egypt when he struck the Egyptians, but spared the houses. And the people that bowed their heads in the worship. Oh. Now back in the time of the Israelite, when they got freed them from Egypt, uh, he, could ha he had all of them to put bread over their doors. So when he sent his death angel to strike down, strike, strike Egypt, those who had the blood over their door would not receive the same plague that the Egypt did. Egyptian did. Oh. Okay. Well, that same author that plague Egypt is the same author today. And that blood must be over our doorposts, meaning that blood must be covering our hearts so death will overtake us because of sin. Oh, man. Now, why is that important, brothers and sisters? And God said, listen, listen what he told him. He said, and when your children say to you, what do you mean by this service? You shall say it is a sacrifice of the Lord Passover, for he passed over the houses. Of the people in uh, of the people of Israel in Egypt when he struck the Egyptians. Okay. The question is, when Christ Jesus coming, his second coming in a few few years, will he pass over your house? Oh. Okay. When all the Lord and Savior Christ Jesus come in a few years, will he pass over your house? Okay. And the only way that he pass over your house is, is if the blood is over your door. Meaning or uh, if you club uh, meaning if you are covered in the blood of his sacrifice. Why? Because brothers and sisters. Our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus is the author of life, and based upon our life, he, it is being recorded in heaven. There is a book of our life in heaven. Okay? Okay? There is a book. There is a book. Uh, there is a book of our life in heaven. And everything that we are doing is being recorded. Okay? And depending on if we have faith in Jesus or not, depends on what we are judged by. Okay? In the kingdom of heaven, Christ Jesus is going to come at his second coming. And all men, Jesus, there, will, there will be a great judgment where Jesus will open the Lamb Book of Life. Okay? And Jesus will have your book on one side, then he have the Lamb Book of Life on the other. Okay? The Lamb Book of Life will be standing over before him, and then your book will be pulled off the shelf and laid down. Okay? And if your name is written in the Lamb Book of Life, God is going to say, hey, take that away, take that away. Put that up. He is safe because he's in the Lamb Book of Life. Right? You know what he's in? He's in the author life book. Oh. He in the author life book because see, watch this. The same God that is recording your life is the same God that can free you. Oh. The same author that is recording your life is the same author that can free you. Why? Because he control he control life or death. Okay? So, brothers and sisters, the truth of the matter is, we must have faith in Jesus that our name may be written in the Lamb Book of Life, that Jesus may pass over us when he come. That he may pass over us when we come because we were covered in the blood of his sacrifice. Okay? And as we walk through the blood of his sacrifice, then our life becomes a memorial so other people can see that his name written on us. Oh, okay. As we walk faithful to God in this life, it is evident that Jesus' name is written on us. Oh. And as his name is written on us, my brother and sister, then our name is written, sealed in the Lamb Book of Life. Oh. Now why is that important? Because as our name is written in the Lamb Book of Life, we won't be judged by the life that we will we won't be judged by the corrupt life that we live according to our book. Brother and sister, our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus took me in the spirit and showed me him standing before the throne and I seen the Lamb Book of Life open. Okay. In Revelation 20, 12, it said, the books is open, they were judged according to what they did. The Lord Jesus took me in the spirit and showed me him judging everybody in the world according to what they had did. And the books was open. The main book that was open is the Lamb Book of Life. So every name that is not written in the Lamb Book of Life, their, their, their personal book is pulled off the shelf. Oh, Jesus took me in the spirit and I seen thousands upon thousands standing before the throne of God. His sheep was on the right side, his goat was on the left. He, and he was standing there in the center of everybody with his lamb book of life open. And it was so much power coming from the throne. 
Okay? And watch this. And the Lord Jesus even said to me now, everybody name that is not written in, uh, written in the Lamb Book of Life, your, your personal book is going to be removed from the shelf. Your personal book is going to be removed from the shelf. And when your book is review, uh, removed from the shelf, he's going to look at what you did instead of what he did. Oh. He's going to look at what you did instead of what he did. Because when he look at his book, he's he going to be like, okay, I don't see your name written in what I did in my testimony. So let me pull your book off the shelf and see what you did. And he's going to see every corrupt deed that you have done in your life. And then he's going to say, depart from me. I never knew you workers of iniquity. Why is that important? Because Jesus is the author of life. Yeah? We are not the author of our own life. Sometimes we can be prideful and think that we're the author of our own life. But we're not the author of our own, own life. Jesus is the author of your life. And when every man takes his last breath, they're going to stand before him and see that he is the author that controls where you go. Oh, uh, so what do we say? Let us live for God that he may pass over us by his sacrifice. Uh, let us live for God that he may pass over us by his sacrifice. And that sacrifice and that God is Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Okay? Then the Lord took me to uh, Exodus chapter 12, verses 11, uh, excuse me. Exodus chapter 12, verses 11 through 18. Now watch what it says now. It says, I'm going to read it. Okay. Let me read it. In this manner you shall eat it with your belt, with your belt fastened, with your belt fastened. It says, in this manner you shall eat it with your belt fastened, your sandals on your feet and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover, for I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike all the firstborn of the land of Egypt, both, both man and beast, and on all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. And the Lord, the blood, the blood shall be a sign for you on the house where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and, not, and, and no plague will befall you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be your memorial day, and you shall keep it as a feast to the Lord throughout your generation, as a statue forever, you shall keep it, keep it as a feast. Seven days you shall eat unleavened bread. On the first day you shall remove leaven out of your house, for if anyone eats what is leaven from the first day until the seventh, that person shall be cut off from Israel. On the first day you shall hold a holy, uh, a holy assembly, and on the seven, on the seven needs to eat, and alone, and that alone may be prepared for you. Okay? And you shall observe the feast of unleavened bread, for on the very day I brought your host out of the land of Egypt. Therefore you shall observe this day throughout your generation as a statue forever. In the first month from the fourteenth day of the month at the evening, you shall eat, you shall eat unleavened bread until the 21st day of the month at evening. Okay. So God was dealing with them. Uh, he was showing that the blood would be a sign, a memorial. Oh, Well, the blood of Jesus is a memorial to those that call upon his name that he have saved them by his grace. Okay. And that is, an, that is, an, 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 that is an, as it is a memorial, it calls us to live by that unleavened bread, to eat that matter that came from heaven that is unleavened. Oh, okay. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. I am that bread that come down from heaven. So the author of life is the bread of life. Oh. The author of life is the bread of life. And he said, whoever eats of me shall, whoever eats of me shall enter the kingdom of God. He said, those that ate the bread of this life, they died in Paris. But when they ate the bread that came from the one who is life, they never perish. Brothers and sisters, let us not labor to eat the bread of this life that causes us to perish because of the corruption of this world, but rather let us eat the bread that comes from heaven that causes us to live by the spirit that brings life. Oh, and that bread is Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior, because Christ Jesus is that unleavened bread. Christ Jesus is that unleavened bread. Jesus is that bread. Jesus is that life without corruption. Jesus is that life uh, without that, that pure life, that pure holiness, that pure righteousness. Jesus is that life that is unleavened that causes us to walk perfect in the sight of God. Not that we are perfect, but that as we live in Him, we walk in the perfection of His sacrifice. Oh, uh, and in that way, we have obeyed the author of life. Jesus is the author of life. He is the start, that He is the author and the finisher of our faith. So as he is the author of life, that means our faith brings life through him. Oh. As Jesus is the author of life, that means our faith brings life 
through him because he is the author of life. Oh, okay. That means as Jesus is the author of life, that means he engineers our faith. Oh. As Jesus is the author of life, that means he engineered our faith to what? Salvation that we may walk in the righteousness of God. Why? That we may live by his testimony and not be judged by the testimony of our own deeds. Why? Because he loved us so much, even, even to the death on the cross. Okay? Okay? So let's keep moving forward. Okay? Then the Lord took me to Proverbs chapter 10. Okay? He took me to Proverbs. He took me to Proverbs chapter 10. Okay. Took me to Proverbs chapter 10, verse 1 through 6. It said, A wise it said, A wise son makes a glad father, but a foolish son is a sorrow to his mother. Treasure treasures gained by wickedness do not profit, but righteousness delivers from death. Oh, watch it. A wise son makes a glad father, but a foolish son is sorrow to his mother. Treasures gained by wickedness do not profit, but righteousness delivers from death. Okay. Brother and sister, in this hour, the one word government is seeking to get riches by unrighteousness. Oh, seeking to get richness, riches by unrighteousness, right? That they will walk in the foolishness of their own ways and produce corruption that does not profit eternal life. Oh, and because of that, they will be judged by their own deeds because they did not believe the testimony of Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. But the scripture tells us that a wise son makes a glad father. Well, our Father in Heaven is glad when we walk in His wisdom. Oh. Our Father in Heaven is glad when we walk in His wisdom. Why? Because they bring honor to His name. Oh. They bring honor to His name. And that name, the Father's name, is Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Okay? So let's keep, let's keep moving forward, brothers and sisters. Okay? It said, The Lord does not let the righteous go hungry, but thwarts the craving of the wicked. Okay? In this hour, as we walk righteous, in the righteousness of God, he thwarts the craving of the wicked of our life. Why? Because his spirit keeps us in his heart. Oh, as we walk in the righteousness of God, he thwarts the craving of the wicked because he is the author of our life that controls our soul according to his will and his purpose. And as he controls our soul according to his will and his purpose, let us lay down our life by giving ourselves over to his testimony. Okay. Why? Because he seeks for us to be little children and the little children follow the author testimony okay okay if us who are earth who will follow the testimony of men how much more should we follow the testimony of god oh if if we will read a self-help motivational speech book in this life if we will read a self self-help book a motivational speaker book in this life for goddess how much more should we read, read the author of life testimony that give goddess to eternal life oh so what do we say? Let us obey the gospel that the author that the author life that is in him may be revealed through us through his name. And that name is Christ Jesus. Our Lord and Savior. Okay. Four. Verse four. A slack hand causes poverty, but a hand of the diligent make rich. God our Father in heaven said, I got a diligent hand. The Father in heaven said, I got a diligent hand. And that hand is his son that touch every man through the gospel. Oh. Okay. The Father in heaven said, I got a diligent hand, and I'm reaching out to my children through my son, Jesus, that they may obey the testimony that I've written. Why? Because the greatest testimony is not what man have have did, but the greatest testimony is that, that the testimony that God have written through his sacrifice. Okay? So what do we say? Let us obey the diligent hand of God that he make us rich in his glory. Oh, let us pay the testimony of God that his diligent hand will make us rich in his glory. And that glory is Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Okay. Why? Because God said, my hand is not slack that causes poverty, but my hand is mighty that brings power and forever wealth through the riches of my righteousness. True riches is not the money of this world, but true richness is the righteousness of God. Righteousness of God. True wealth is not the riches of this world, but true wealth is the righteousness of God that causes us to live for him in his kingdom. Okay? So what do we say? Let us live by the author of life that everything he write in us will be his glory. Oh. Let us obey the author of life that everything he write in us will be for his glory. Oh. Let us obey the author of life that everything that he said about us will bring us back to the rightful place in our identity that in our days we may be his little children. Yep. So what do we say? Let us live by the author of life because the author of life gave all for us to be with him. Okay. Verse 5. He who gathers in the summer is a brutal son, but he who sleeps in harvest 
is a song who brings shame. When this seven-year period leading up to the second coming, this is the greatest, this is the hour of the greatest harvest. Oh, this is the hour of the greatest harvest. And the greatest harvest is for our, in the greatest harvest, and not just the outward work, but the greatest har harvest is the fruit that needs to be buried in our heart. Oh, there's an outward harvest, but there's an inner, inner harvest. And there's a great harvest of people that will come into the kingdom in this hour, but there's also a greater harvest in our heart that God want to see us bear fruit of righteousness according to his spirit. Why is it important? Because God is life and this world is death. God is life, this world is death. And as we obey the author, we move by his will. Oh. As we obey the author, we move by his will, his testimony in his, is engraved in our heart. Okay? As the testimony of Jesus is engraved in our heart, that we can live for his glory at all costs. Verse 6, blessed are, blessed are on the head of the righteous, but the mouth of the wicked conceal violence. In this hour, the one world government, the United Nations, will blind the world through pride, where violence will increase. You see right now, uh, violence and corruption is uh, increase all around the world because they're talking about defund the police. In this hour, this whole world will go into a slumber where they will conceal violence out of a place of, they, they, will, conceal, uh, they will conceal violence under the umbrella of good. Watch it. You will see corrupt leaders conceal violence on the umbrella of good because it helped with population control. Sad. Sad and corrupt. But the Lord said, blessings are on the head of the righteous because their head is Christ. Oh. Blessings are the head of righteousness because their mind is in Christ and have been renewed by his power and been transformed by his spirit. So what do we say? Let, us, let our head be blessed because Jesus' mind is in, living on the inside of us. Oh. Let our mind be blessed because the righteousness of God is being concealed in our heart. Oh. Let the righteousness of God fill us that the author of life will be the one we labor for. Oh. If us who are earthly were labor for man in his life out under submission, how much more should we labor for a God who is the creator of the universe that submit our souls to his whole life? Oh. So what do we say? Christ Jesus is the author of life. Okay. Dear Lord, took me to Proverbs 27.7. Proverbs 27, verse 7. And it says, One who is full, full of loaves hunger, but one who are hunger, hunger, everything bitter and sweet. Okay? In this hour, this seven years period leading up to the second coming, they are passing laws, rules, and regulations through the spirit of the Antichrist where everything will be bitter. Okay? Everything will be bitter. Watch this. Okay? Because of the corruption in this hour, Everything the governments of this world do will be from a bitter place of corruption. Okay? If us who do not live in the life of Christ, this bitterness will taste sweet. In this hour, if you don't live for Christ, every bitter thing they do will taste sweet. Why? Because when you're hungry, you'll eat anything. Oh. Sometimes when you're hungry, you'll eat anything. But when you're filled with that which is good, things that, things that are not good don't satisfy you. Let me give you an example. Uh, I've been cooking for my wife a different type of way. She's been eating a whole lot cleaner, right? She's been eating a whole lot cleaner. And then for two days, she uh, she ate, she and then for two days, she ate a different meal, and she can feel the difference because she had been eating clean. Uh, I was cooking for my wife a certain way, and she was eating clean. Then when she ate different for two days, she can feel that she can feel the heaven, and she can feel the difference in the meal because she had been eating clean. Uh, obey the gospel, live by the author of life, eat the clean manner from heaven. Okay. And because they've been eating clean, the things that are bitter, they won't eat of. Oh. The things that were bitter, they won't eat of because they don't satisfy their soul like the manner of God. And their bread is Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. But us who live by this world and compare to this world, that don't eat clean, do not eat the word of God, will eat the bitterness of corruption in this hour that man will pour out through their deception. Right? Okay. Deception is a bitter food. Oh. Okay. Deception is a polluted bitter food. Right? So in order for us to eat clean, we have to know the food that is clean. In order for us to eat clean, we must know the author who made the food clean. Oh. In order for us to eat clean, we must know the author who is clean. And in order for us to know the author who is clean, we must live by his spirit that he may reveal his heart to us. Why? Because Jesus is the author of life, and as we live by the author of life, he cleans us from the inside out. That, that that which is around us won't corrupt us because we're living for a different life. Why? Because as we live for a different life, we are chained to the kingdom of heaven. 
when we live for the life of heaven, we are chained by the life of heaven, and the life of this life, the life that we're currently in, have no way to us. Why? Because we live from the author of, we live, we live by the author of all things. Okay? So what do we say? In this hour, this world will be bitter. But the righteousness of God is as sweet as honey. Therefore, let us eat the righteousness of God that is as sweet as honey that we won't be deceived by the bitterness of this life. So what do we say? Let us obey the gospel. Let us obey the gospel. Let us obey the gospel and live for his glory. Let us obey the gospel and live for his glory that his glory may consume us in every way. Okay? That his glory may consume us in every way. Then the Lord said, Proverbs chapter 27. Okay. It said the poor and seeks danger and hide himself, but the simple go on to suffer for it. Okay. Brothers and sisters, Jesus said the, the righteous hide themselves when they see danger, they hide themselves, but the wicked go on being simple and they suffer for it. Church, we are, listen, brothers and sisters, okay? we're in that hour that seven year period leading up to the second coming. We're a few years away from the great tribulation. Okay. Let us not. Uh, let us not be in a church. Let us not be in denial and deny the things that God revealed to us, and we suffer for it because we were being simple. Oh, why? Because God is shaking this world to reveal to the church that I'm coming soon. Therefore, let us not turn turn away from the message that He's given us because we love this life, but rather let us humble ourselves and come into the one that is life, that we may not suffer for us walking in the simplicity of this life. Oh, because the scripture tells us that those who are wise, when they see danger. When they see danger, they hide themselves. Noah, God told Noah, of off the flood, the whole world, build a ark to save your family. Because Noah seen danger coming, he hid himself inside of the ark for safety because he believed God. Church, as God has shaken this world and shown us that we're facing the great tribulation and this hour of strong delusion, which is danger to man's soul, let us hide ourselves in the ark. Let us hide ourselves inside of Christ Jesus that he may protect us from everything that is not right. Oh. And as we hide ourselves in Christ Jesus, as we are hidden in his testimony, we will be deceived by the stuff around us because we've been sheltered by his glory. Oh. If us who are earthly were sheltered in place because of COVID-19, how much more should we shelter in Christ that we may turn from sin? Oh. If us who are earthly were sheltered in place because of COVID-19, how much more should we shelter in Christ and turn from sin? Oh, because there's a greater killer than COVID-19 that is sin. And in this hour, the one world globalists are giving much deception to make the world conform to sin. But church, we walk in righteousness. We don't conform to sin. We transform by the power of God. Oh, why? That we may live to please his heart. So church, let us not be simple in this hour and go on out in rebellion and suffer deception because we disobeyed the will of God. But rather, let us humble ourselves that we may glorify God because our heart was in a posture of humility because we believe what the author said. And the author said, whatever man believes in me shall not perish, shall receive eternal life. But whoever don't believe in me shall be, is condemned already because they did not believe in God, one and only son. Brothers and sisters, that is all I have for you today. Okay. Brothers and sisters, that is all I have for you today. I pray that this word was a blessing to you, and I pray that it leads you to everlasting life. Okay? Church, what do we say? It's time for us to repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And church, we're not waiting on the end time to get here. Because the end is now. America, 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 repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. America, you're about to be judged back to back, back to back. Back to back until you humble yourself and acknowledge that Jesus is God and turn away from your sins. America, repent. You're about to be judged and humble severe like you have never seen before. America, repent. You're about to see famine like you have never seen before. Repent, America. Jesus is about to judge you for all the things you have done and lead his children astray. Repent, America. Judgment is on this land. Judgment is on this world. And Jesus is not pulling it back to his second coming. Okay? Okay. So if you have not accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior, repeat this prayer to me. Say, Dear Lord, I repent of my sins. Please forgive me of my sins. Thank you for leading me to this place. Fill me with your spirit. Teach me to walk in your ways. I put my trust in you for salvation. I believe that you sent your one and only son. That whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and my risen Savior. Thank you for your grace and thank you for your mercy. In Jesus' person name we pray. Amen. 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 If you accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you did the best thing you can ever do in your life. 
If you accept Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you did the best thing you could ever do in your life. Now go get baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, the name of the Father, the name of the Son, the name of the Holy Spirit, okay? So what did they say about God's grace? God is not a God that beat us over the head with everything we do wrong, but he is a God that expects for us to repent when we do do wrong. Because God did not give us his grace for us to live in the type of way we want, but God gave us his grace so we can live the way he wants. And that way is Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Okay? Now, God knows a wise man will fall seven times and he get back up again. So God knows we we'll make mistakes. The question is, what do we do when we fall? Do we get back up and keep doing the same thing? Or do we repent and humble ourselves and come to him because we want to be we want to be removed from that place that breaks his heart? Okay? If you have dealt with church, or this is the hour to come back to Jesus. Jesus is coming back for a church. Okay? Uh, now, I, uh, if you have dealt with church hurt, it was not God that hurt you. It was man that misrepresented God that hurt you. Okay? Now, God is, there are truth, and every church is not bad. There are churches that are really abandoned God, for really taking care of God's children, that really love Jesus, and he is coming back for the church. So let no man keep you from your inheritance of eternal life by coming to his glory and having fellowship with his children. Okay? So, brothers and sisters, this is all I have for you today. I pray the word was a blessing to you, and I pray that it leads you to everlasting life. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly and Wise Father, we repent of our sin. Please forgive us our sin. We come for your throne. Lord, we just thank you for your word that you poured out from heaven. We pray, Father, that it brings us closer to you. We pray that it brings us into a greater urgency, a greater obedience to serve you uh, in fear and reverence and holiness because you gave your life for us to be with you forever. And Father, we pray that this word fell on good ground, good soil, that it would not go in one ear and not the other. But we pray that we would take serious your word and live by your word and bear fruit a hundred times fold. And Lord, we pray for protection against the evil one. We pray that he would, we would not give him a foothold to remove any word that I've been spoken today. But rather, we would go on to maturity in your righteousness by seeing you as the author of our life, meaning you are in control of our life, and we're not in control of ourselves, even if we think we are. Lord God, we love you. We repent of our sins, and we thank you for your holiness and the life that you have given us through your sacrifice and your blood that you just gave us to cleanse us from our sins. In Jesus' person name we pray. Amen. 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 Brothers and sisters, see you next time. Goodbye.